Happy Coding. Hey there, this is Kevin with Happy Coding. And I am here to work through a leak code problem, this valid palindrome question here. Um, I am going to take maybe a, I don't know, a unique approach because I am, I'm not just going to dive in and just solve it um, right away. I am going to work through the problem as if I am in a job interview. So I'm going to talk through um, the ways that a interviewer might pose it and the way that a candidate might work through it. So um, the question itself is kind of stated here, over here. And this is, if we're in an interview environment, this is likely what the interviewer would, would give you. So a phrase is a palindrome if um, after converting all of it to um, lowercase letters and removing all of the non-alphanumeric characters, so all of the symbols, it reads the same forward and backward. Um, so alphanumeric is letters and numbers. Um, so given a string S, can you write a function that returns true if S is a palindrome or false if it's not a palindrome? So in a job interview, that might be all they give you. And so before I scroll down, what I want to do, what I want to get in the mindset of is thinking through, if I'm a candidate, what should I ask what should I what should I react to that with so one kind of obvious thing that I tend to ask uh, in uh, interviews when I'm the candidate is can you give me an example input and output and lead code tends to just give those to you right away your interviewer might not um, so don't be afraid to to ask for those um, for, for those example inputs and outputs so I'll get to lead codes in a second but um, I'm going to come up with my own. Oh, I can't zoom in. That's really annoying. Um, I have to zoom in over here, I think. Oh, goodness. Um, okay. So a example might be, I'll write this in a comment, like A, B, A. That is a palindrome because if you read it forwards, you get A, B, A. And if you read it backwards, you get A, B, A. That's an example of a palindrome. So you would return true in this case. Um, another one might be A, B, B, A. And that is also a palindrome because if you read it forwards, you get A, B, B, A. And if you read it backwards, you get A, B, B, A. Okay. Um, so those are sort of two starting cases. Um, another one, let's see, like if I do like C, A, B, A. Um, this is not a palindrome because if you read it forward, you get C, A, B, A. And if you read it backwards, you get A, B, A, C, which is not the same. C, A, B, A and A, B, A, C are two different uh, strings. Um, so this would be false, but um, just to maybe close it out, C, A, B, A, C, um, that would be um, true. So this is the same forwards and backwards. So that might be how I start my interview um, is by asking a question of, can I get, get some example input and output? Um, then what I might do if I'm the candidate is ask about kind of the boundaries of, of like corner cases and what I should expect in the input. So the examples that your interviewer gives you are likely on the sort of simple side. And it's up to you as a candidate to, to tease that out a little bit. So this, uh, Leco kind of spoiled this, but one thing you might ask in this kind of question is, do I know that the string will always contain like only letters and numbers? Um, or can I maybe get something like a, B dash, I don't know, uh, percent sign, uh, a, and what should I do in this case? Um, and in this case, leak code has spelled it out that what you should do is strip these out first. And so you basically delete those first and then you do the check. So um, in this case, this would be true actually, even though the input itself is not a palindrome after you process it, um, it, um, it, it, it is a palindrome. Um, another case might be like spaces. So if I have like race car, you know, the, the input string itself is not a palindrome because the space kind of throws things off. R-A-C-E space C-A-R is not the same as R-A-C space E-C-A-R. <laughs> um, 
But in this case, you want that to be true because um, after you eliminate the space, it actually is a palindrome. R-A-C-E-C-A-R, R-A-C-E-C-A-R. So now you are sort of teasing out the fact that you need to process the data, maybe strip out the um, non-alphanumeric uh, characters. So leak code spells it out in the description itself, but your interviewer might not. Your interviewer might just give you, you know, the, the sort of default um, framing, and then it's up to you as a candidate to, to tease out the, uh, the details. Um, okay, so what else does LeetCode here say? So here's um, some examples that LeetCode gives you. This is a little bit more involved. Um, so you can see kind of what I was getting at where commas and spaces are symbols. And so those get stripped out and uh, they're, they're non-alphanumeric, I should say. And after you strip those out, then you do the check. Um, so that's kind of the... Um, the examples that LeetCode gives you here. So race a car, for example, is not a palindrome because even after you take out these spaces, there's an extra kind of A in the middle here, which kind of throws off the uh, the palindrome. Um, so here's an interesting example where can the string be empty? And in fact, it can. So in that case, we are counting the empty string as a palindrome. So that's another sort of case that I, I should be thinking about as a candidate. Um, some other examples of like teasing out the question might be like asking about the length of the string or can the string be null, for example, or can be really long. And all of that will be, uh, you know, stuff that your, your uh, interviewer will tell you or often they'll like reverse it on you and they'll say, what if it can be null? What would you do? And that's an opportunity for you to talk through, you know, like handling corner cases, throwing exceptions, that kind of thing. Um, so in LeetCode's case, it says that uh, s.length will always be at least one, so it's not going to give you the empty string, I guess. Um, and uh, s only has ASCII characters, so okay, we don't have to worry about like Unicode or like things that are like two characters that form one letter or anything like that, so that's, that's good to know. Um, the other thing I'll mention is that some of these assumptions might come back in an interview question. So if I ask this interview question and I've stated, you know, what I've stated so far, then the candidate might go through and, and work through the problem given those assumptions. And then after that, I'll say, okay, now what if it, you know, can contain non ASCII characters? What would you do in the case of something like a, like a Unicode symbol, symbol that's actually two characters that combine into one, you know, things like that. Um, or what would you do if the string is so long that it needs to be given to you in like a stream or something? Um, so those are, you know, maybe possible follow-up questions that you might expect. Anyway, um, that's kind of teasing out the problem. And now we have sort of a definition of, of what we're doing. And in an interview environment, you won't get, well, first of all, you won't get a nice code editor with like a run and submit button and a compiler and stuff. Um, but you'll often have to write the definition of the function yourself. So get into the habit of like not taking this for granted. Um, so think through like, if you're asking me to return true, then I need to return a Boolean. If I'm taking a string, then that's going to be an argument, um, things like that. So I will maybe leave my comments here. That's probably what I would do in an interview and I'm gonna give myself some white space. So I'm going to start coding and um, this is kind of the, the flow of an interview where first we spend just a few minutes, probably less time than I spent here, honestly, um, just cause I was talking through the process, um, but just a couple minutes talking about input output, corner cases, making sure you understand the, the scope of the problem. Um, now I'm going to start coding and the most important thing is to talk out loud, to like think out loud, to walk through what you're thinking. So <laughs> I'm gonna be a little bit silly here and I'm actually just kind of curious if uh, LeetCode will let me do this, but I do know that there is um, some helpful function in the, uh, some helpful functions in the string builder class. And if I was given this question in an interview, um, I might just start by saying, hey, I, I know I can use string builder here, is that, okay or do you want me to you know do it myself likely they'll um, want me to do it myself but it does sort of show that I'm thinking about it so I'm actually just kind of curious um, if if string builder will work um, so I'm going to get to that in a second but actually first what I need to do is um, process the um, the string so that it does not contain 
uh, symbols and that I convert it all to lowercase. So I'll start with that actually. So I'll say string lowercase equals, and this is going to be s dot to lowercase, I think it is. And then I need to strip out the um, non alphanumeric characters. So I'll call this like string. I don't know, stripped string. It's a little awkward, but that's okay. Uh, equals, and then here I need to remember the syntax for replacing characters in a string. Um, I will admit that I looked this up before this video, um, but uh, in a real coding environment, if I was like, you know, I am pretty sure there's like a replace function or something. I know that it takes a, a regular expression and I don't quite remember the syntax. That's that's fine. Um, but I do think that I remember this is string dot replace all and I need to give it two strings. One is a regular expression and one is the thing to replace it with. The thing I'm replacing it with will just be empty because I'm getting rid of everything. And then this will be, I think I am going to choose anything that's not. So I'm going to use that character and not um, a to Z or zero to nine. So I'm stripping out anything that's not a letter and not a uh, number. I've already converted it to lowercase, so I don't need to worry about like A to Z. It wouldn't hurt anything, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we're gonna see in a second if that actually works. So in a interview environment, you can't really test your code. Um, you can test it kind of line by line, like verbally or, or mentally by like just talking through what you expect each line to do. Um, but you're not gonna have a run button generally. Um, but in LeetCode, I do. <laughs> so I'm going to just check that this is doing what I think it is. So I'm going to say stripped string. And I actually realized that I made a mistake here. So this actually needs to be lowercase. I need to um, replace what is in my lowercase. I could have probably done this in one line, but I need to do both of these things. If I just do s dot replace all, I'm like just throwing this string away. So I actually need to use this string in my next step. So I'm like iteratively uh, processing it. And just to make the compiler happy, I'm going to return true. So this is going to make um, leak code upset uh, because likely I'm going to not pass, uh, you know, most of the uh, test cases. But I just want to check that my 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 code is doing what I want. Um, if I care deeply about my like leak code score or whatever, I would probably not do it this way. I would maybe do this in a separate editor, but I don't care. Um, so really, what I want to see is the um, the output here. So it looks like I am properly uh, getting rid of spaces. And is there a way, can I get the other uh, test case? Oh, here it goes. So am I stripping out the commas? I am, and the space is cool. And to lowercase, awesome. Okay, so that looks like it's working. Um, and then the empty string, um, I am printing out uh, nothing, um, just an empty line. So that seems like it's uh, what I expected. Cool. So now I have my stripped string. And now I do want to kind of play with um, the uh, the string builder thing. So I'm going to say like string builder. This is all temporary. I'm going to get rid of this in a second. So I'm just going to say SB equals new string builder um, stripped string. And I want to say like, I don't know, I'm going to split this up in a couple lines. Boolean is palindrome equals um, what do I want here? SB dot reverse. So there's a reverse function in the uh, string builder class. And then I think I need a dot to string and then dot equals um, stripped string. So this is just me being kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of curious and kind of honestly kind of obnoxious. <laughs> um, but I am just kind of curious. And this is something I would maybe just mention in, a, in an interview if I got this kind of question like, hey, I know there's a way to do this, like using standard Java, uh, the, using the Java API. Could I use that? And your interview might say, oh, you know, how would you do that? I wouldn't recommend spending a ton of time here. If you're like struggling to remember what it is, don't bother. But if you remember it off the top of your head, then, then go for it. That does show you're sort of familiar with the language. So as I say that, I'm sure I messed something up. So let's see what happens. Okay, so actually this is funny because my, my, my three like gimme test cases work. So now I could submit this. I am going to just to see see if this actually passes the all, all of the test cases, but I am not going to actually stick with this solution. So this this does work, um, and that's nice and all, but likely your interviewer will say, okay, cool. Now, how would you do that without using String Builder? Um, so without relying on these like built-in functions. Um, so now I'm back to 
doing it myself. Um, so it's a nice thing to be able to say that you did it um, or say that you are familiar with the language, but you know, you're probably not going to get away with just, just using a, a one liner and, and calling it a day. Um, or maybe you would, but then they would come back and say, okay, now what about if it had, you know, Unicode characters or something like that? Or what if the string was really long and you had to take it in multiple batches? Those are kind of common follow-up questions. Um, anyway, I'm going to say, uh, what if I can't use this uh, string builder function? So now I'm at the sort of point in the interview where I need to outline a plan at a high level. So just thinking out loud, and this is stuff I would say to my interviewer, um, what I'm thinking is I'm going to use probably a for loop that iterates over every um, character in my string. And then I need to check what I need to check if the other end of my string has that character as well. The other way to do it might be to start in the middle, um, but then I'm going to have this awkward thing where like the middle could be one character or it could be two. Um, I think that could work, but I'm going to try to make my life a little easier by doing it in like one for loop that loops over and checks like the mirror index. So if I'm at zero, then I'm at like length probably minus one. I'm at one, now I'm at length minus two. I'm at three, I'm at length minus, you know, on and on and on until I am in the middle maybe. Um, and if I ever encounter a character whose mirror is not the same, then I know that I don't have a palindrome and I can return false. So I'm talking through this at a high level. I haven't written any code yet, um, but I'm just kind of checking in with my interviewer. Like, does that sound reasonable? Does that sound like I'm on the right track there? Or would you like me to think through it a little bit more? Um, in this case, I think that's probably the way to go, but in a like more involved question or one with multiple pieces, um, this is where your interviewer might then like ask, um, what's the algorithmic complexity of that approach? Uh, can you improve that? Is there a way that you could maybe do it in, you know, less time than what you've outlined? In this case, I think that a, a single for loop is going to get pretty close to optimal. So um, without further ado, I'm going to say like, I don't know, for, um, int i equals zero, i is less than, and I gotta be careful here because I don't want s, I want this stripped string, stripped string equals, uh, sorry, <laughs> equals, uh, i is less than stripped string, um, and then i plus plus. So I've got my index, and is that syntax right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got my index, so now I want to get my characters. So I'm gonna say like, care, um, I, I could call this like left character maybe equals what uh, stripped string dot care at or is it character at this one I actually don't remember uh, off the top of my head character at care at it doesn't matter in a job interview if you say care at versus character at it doesn't really matter um, especially if you mention like I'm not sure if it's care at or character at I think staring at it might be character at but we're gonna find out Lee code will yell at me if I get it wrong um, Anyway, this is I, so I'm at starting at zero, one, two, I'm just iterating over the string. Um, and then I want the right care, so my mirror character. So if I'm at zero, I want length minus one. So I want that last character. If I'm at one, I want length minus two. So I think this is gonna end up being stripped string dot character at um, stripped string dot length and I think that's a function minus one minus i so if I'm at zero I'm at stripped length minus one if I'm at one it's stripped length minus two if I'm at uh, you know so on and so forth um, and one thing I'm sort of thinking through and I would say this all in a job interview like I'm, I'm talking out loud as if I am the candidate but one thing I'm thinking of is you know I'm kind of suspicious that there's maybe an off by one error here um, that that might be something I come back to and check um, more carefully I also completely forgot an equal sign here so that's fun um, okay so now I have the left character and the right character so what I can maybe do is if left care is not equal to right care then I want to return false because here I know that my string contains at least one case where the mirror 
of the um of the character i'm looking at is is not the same so it's like if i got to i don't know let me give you an example so if i had like a c b b a um so what I did was I went to A first, I looked for its mirror and I saw an A. So I said, okay, let's keep going. That's the first iteration of the loop. Then I becomes one. So I'm here, I get left character of C and right character of B. And I can see that they're not equal, which means it's not a palindrome. So this process of like working through examples, throwing the examples at my code, working through it line by line, um, that's super helpful in a job interview, like get into that habit, uh, because you won't be able to just hit the run button. Um, anyway, um, now that I have that logic, I know that if I have gone the entire way through the string, then I have never triggered this if statement. And that means that all of my characters are, they have a matching like mirror, um, so uh, if I hit here, I can return true because I know that the, the string is indeed a palindrome. So let's uh, run that and see what happens. And okay, cool. I made some kind of uh, syntax here. Oh yeah, okay, I need dot length here. Whoops, this is the, the danger of talking out loud while typing. It's uh, easy to sort of like miss things as you're like talking and then you come back to it, but... Um, Leak code will help with that kind of thing. Um, this is also why it's important to come back to your uh, code and just read it line by line to your interviewer. It might sound tedious, and honestly, it is kind of tedious, but you'll catch things like what I just uh, what I just discovered. And yeah, okay, character at um, yeah, maybe it is care at actually. very suspicious, but let's find out. <laughs> All right, cool. So the three gimme test cases, which are kind of the, I don't know, the, the simpler ones that um, are in the description, um, those work. So now I can submit this and fingers crossed, see what happens. And okay, cool. That, that was accepted. Um, so Again, in a job interview, you won't have that submit button. You won't be able to just run it against dozens of test cases. Um, so you will have to do that yourself manually, uh, similar to what I did before, where I gave myself a uh, input, like an example input, and I worked through my code line by line. I said, okay, if I is this, then left care is this, right care is this, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'll have to do that kind of manually. So. I've done that already, so I'm not going to make you sit through it here, but that that habit in a job interview is, um, you know, super, super helpful. Um, so I have completed the sort of assigned task with my interviewer, and I've been talking out loud, and I'm feeling pretty good. So I'll say, you know, I think this is getting pretty close. What do you think? Um, and my interviewer will now either like point out things that maybe I missed or like, you know, if I have an off by one error that my interviewer notices, they'll say, um, hey, what about this uh, example input? So they won't say like, hint, I think this line is wrong. But what they'll likely say is, hmm, can you work through your code with this example? And what they're trying to get you to do is notice something in your code. Um, or they're just encouraging you to work, like show, like work through your code uh, verbally. But um, at this point in the interview, that's likely what would happen. Um, some back and forth, uh, just kind of like working through different examples, um, and then a an, uh, very common follow-up or question or like the next f sort of phase of an interview would be the dreaded algorithmic complexity question. So, what is the algorithmic complexity of this solution? Some interviewers will ask it, some won't. So I wouldn't uh, recommend just volunteering the information unless you're very sure. Um, if you're like, I'm not sure if it's like n squared or n to the cubed, um, you know, I would just say, uh, you, know, you know, talk about inefficiencies without getting into specifics. But if your interviewer asks you, then, you know, you're on the hook for it. So in this case, the algorithmic complexity, um, so I have a single for loop that loops over the length of the string. This is the stripped string, but in the worst case, the stripped string is the same length as the, uh, as the input. So this is essentially iterating over the entire input. And then in here, 
Um, this is going to be constant time. All of this is going to be constant time. This is constant time. So I have one linear for loop. So this is linear, which is uh, O of N. So the complexity of this is O of N. And at this point, my interviewer will likely say, like one of the most common interview questions is, well, could you improve that at all? And in this case, what I would maybe think through is my for loop right now is iterating over the entire string, which is probably overkill because what I'm doing actually is in the case of, I don't know, A, B, B, A, I am saying um, for int I equals zero. So I start with A, I check it against this A, okay? Then I iterate over to one. Um, I check this B against this B, cool. And then my for loop keeps going. So I actually then go to this B, the third B, and I check it against its mirror, which is the second B. And finally, I, my for loop gets here to the last index and I check it against the first index. And this is overkill because after like the second half of the string, I've already checked all of the remaining characters. Um, so after I check the first character, I don't need to check the last character because I already did that. Um, so in this case, I think I can likely get away with um, just dividing this by two. So I'm going halfway down the length of the string. Uh, again, I'm kind of suspicious that this might have like an off by one error. And in a real interview, I might want to work through like, what's this case do? What's this case do? In the case of leak code, I'm just gonna hit the run button. All right, so the gimme's uh, pass and let me hit that submit button, see what happens. And cool, my runtime um, has, I, I actually don't remember what it was before that divided by two, but it doesn't matter because um, I can just kind of tell verbally that I have cut my runtime in half essentially. So now follow up question, what is the um, algorithmic complexity? And this is uh, still linear. <laughs> Uh, because of the properties of, of big O, um, what you do is you take, like, you get to O of N over 2. So I'm iterating over um, half of my input, and then you uh, get rid of any multiplier. So I'm going to get rid of the divided by 2, so it still ends up being O of N. Um, so according to big O, I haven't actually really improved this all that much. Uh, I haven't gone down to constant time or anything. It's still linear, but it is, you know, more efficient than, than my first approach. Um, in fact, it's twice as efficient. So that's where I'm going to end my uh, sort of exercise here. Um, in a job interview, what would now likely happen is you'd get a follow-up question, like I kind of hinted at uh, earlier. Um, this is where your interview would say, okay, now what if instead of checking if the string is a palindrome, how would you check if it contains a palindrome, for example? So now, um, where's that example? Like C, A, B, A is not a palindrome, but it does contain a palindrome. So what would you change about your code to, to solve that kind of related, but, but more, more complicated problem? Or um, you maybe you return every palindrome that a string contains. That's kind of another related problem. So you will never um, get to an interview and your interviewer will say, okay, you're done, you finished early, go to the next one. There will always be a follow-up. You will never feel like you finished because there will always be like that extra step that comes afterwards because your job, your, your interviewer doesn't want to run out of time, honestly. Um, but that's where I'm going to end this because I have solved this problem as stated. Um, so yeah, hope that helps. Uh, as you do like mock interviews or you practice interviews, um, try to think as the interviewer and look for your candidate to ask those questions, to um, talk out loud. So as you ask the question, you know, maybe don't give them the whole thing. Um, don't give them all of the examples. Don't give them all of the corner cases give them as i don't want to say as little as possible because don't be mean about it but you know leave it up to you the candidate to tease out some of these properties so you might just explain what a palindrome is and then say given a string s return true if it is a palindrome and then wait for your candidate for your you know your partner 
to ask, okay, can you give me an example input and output? Um, wait for them to say, ooh, can it contain symbols? Can it contain spaces? And then, um, you know, give them answers as you see fit. And you could start with something a little more simple. So you could say, you know what, just to get started, let's assume that it does not contain anything other than letters. And then as they finish it, then you can ask that follow up like, okay, now what would you do if it does contain symbols? Um, and then, you know, have them work through it that way. So that's how I would approach it as the interviewer. Uh, all right, um, I'm going to call it there. Thanks for watching. And uh, as always, happy interviewing.